Hello, welcome to 605 at 605. We are back at it again with my good friend, Ken Daniels. Hey, everybody. Ken is a, uh, he is a Swiss Army Knife man. <laughs> he, uh, we met back in 2016, right? 16. 16, uh, at Fright Night, which, uh, Louisville or Lexington? Louis I always confuse Louisville. the two. Yeah, was one of Louisville's hottest conventions and is still going on today going to be uh happening is it october october 1st first third yeah 2021 <clears throat> there'll be a special movie they're playing called they see you that we may or may not have something to do with <laughs> we, um we may have heard of it yeah but we'll be premiering it there but uh anyways so yeah ken's got festivals he's done fan films he's done features he's done shorts um You've done all kinds of things around the industry, too, not just in the filmmaking aspect, right? Yeah. Um, that's what I mean. Swiss Army Knife. I've worked, started, helped to start several film festivals. I was the first promotions PR person for Lake Placid. Worked the first Woodstock Film Festival they ever had. Um, not the one in the 70s. I'm not that old. <laughs> they started. The first film festival. <laughs> first film at festival. Woodstock. They started, there's like, I think it was 20. 223 uh, let's see no it was 2003 i think okay somewhere around there 2000 i know you knew they did one two yeah 2002 or 2003 so they've been doing it for 18 years or so um i've been doing this you know this is this was always a dream of mine just to, mm -hmm. just to to make movies um when we moved back from las vegas um and what year are we in 2005 okay Immediately started Fright Night, and I decided after coming back from living all over the world, San Francisco, Bay Area, uh, San Mateo, Phoenix, Las Vegas, wanted to come back home. I was in a position to get into the industry I wanted to get into. You know, things have changed. Um, technology made it. You were I was going to say, I mean, the digital, the, digital I mean, it revolution. wasn't really the birth of the digital camera, but that, yeah, the digital revolution. Yeah, the whole revolution. The, the with, handy cam with started YouTube coming out and, and everything. And dis different distribution channels. And I wanted to support the indie, and I loved horror. You know, I grew up wanting to be a special effects uh, makeup artist at one time. So that was the calling that was the calling. Yeah, at one that point. was the calling. Back in the 80s, um, when I was out of high school, I wanted to be an animator, cartoonist, and special effects uh, okay. guy. And I was in touch with the Dick Smith, everybody who knows. Wow, yeah, yeah. Um, he was so good to me. Uh, I couldn't afford his course, but he would advise me and still talk to me. Uh, he encouraged me. And I didn't grow up in a very artsy home. They were more of get a job. He was like a mentor of sorts. Yeah. But he was, he was a mentor. Yeah. Way. So I had one of the most... Amazing things happened to me uh, through a mutual friend. I met his son, Dick Smith's son, and at his memorial, I was blessed to be able to attend his memorial. And I've got pictures and videos, and I'm meeting all these idols of mine, right? Mm -hmm. you know, you're talking Rick Baker and all these Oscar-winning people. And, wow. Um, I felt out of place. I really did. <laughs> I thought, oh, what am I doing here? So you know? How old are you at the time? <laughs> Well, this was 2015 when this okay. was. Oh, okay, oh, this was okay, wow. But right before I that, met you, that connects the 80s to what you know what I was interested in. Uh, I was big into haunt attractions. I did my first haunt back in the 70s when I was a youth. Wow, okay. did, had it in my basement. We we were the first to charge money in Louisville. <laughs> uh, there was a home haunt that charged money, not the first yeah. in general, but the first. Hey, home five haunt. bucks to come in my basement. Hey. <laughs> hey. Back then, it was like a quarter or something. Uh, and, and I loved it. And the only way you could make money in special effects, even back then, was, you know, haunts. Yeah. You know? And I was fortunate to, um, um, I grew up with a camera in my hand, made my first film when I was in the seventh grade. And then I ended up making four or five films. One was a horror film called The Minister. One was called War of the Worlds, part whatever it was. Part whatever. Yeah, I had I had miniatures in my basement. I had a miniature uh, space shuttle hanging from oh, the Oh, wow. So you were shooting miniature. Oh, yeah. You were doing oh, yeah. old school style, yeah. We even, uh, we were so old school, Ro, that uh, for our special effects, we had Super 8 film. Now, back in the day, 
we didn't have the luxury of, hey, here's a laser. We could just throw it on and composite it. I literally had to get a magnifying glass, a pen, and a colored marker and go frame by frame to animate. That's crazy. It was nuts. Now, you got to remember, in a four-minute film, you're talking thousands upon thousands yeah. of frames, right? 24 <laughs> frames a second. You're like, oh, my God. So a four-minute film took seven-plus days of hard labor work to do hard really about two weeks then you have to send it off and it goes to a chemical company to process it bring it back and then you get to play it so back in those days uh i did mine as book reports because i hated writing so you would do the animating before you would send it off to be processed yeah okay no 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 it would be processed then you would do it. Okay. so there's a d dual process there okay. that's after it was actually processed <clears throat> But I did films for book reports because I hated writing. And uh, that whole thing got me to where I was at. And I decided that, I don't know who else has this mentality. When I got into the arts, I said, I never want to be a starving artist, ever. So I got into business. So I went into learning how not to starve. And Smart. Yeah, well, I, th yeah. I think it helped me. Yeah, for sure. You know, now... You got to look ahead. You can't look at now. No, you yeah, yeah. And, and, and you got to worry about now. A lot of gotta... these kids today, they don't understand that there's too much out there. So they have to understand supply and demand. Mm -hmm. One of the most fundamental economic uh, ideas that you must understand that you may want to do what you want to do, mm -hmm. but everybody else can do it. So what do you have to offer? Why and are you different? Why are you different? Is it, in, in sales, <clears> that's what it is. What makes you different than the next person that I'm going to buy from you? Are you less expensive? Are you always on time? Do you deliver quality product? Can you give me what I'm looking for? Are you easy to work with, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for and, sure. And that goes with film and anything. You know, we, we always want to work well with That's others. That's at any job. Totally. Yeah. So when I started this stuff and then I came back to Louisville, eventually said, you know, what can I do? Well, I want to put a film festival on. Well, I put a film festival on in 2005 and it was so small that, you know, no celebrities, people just... People just came into a mm -hmm. BFW. Nobody knew about it. And next year, I decided I'm going to bring celebrities. So I, I did that. <clears throat> Built that up till one year we decided to add pop culture to the, the mix, which... Now what Do you remember what year we're in? Uh, 11, 12. Okay. Um, okay. And when 12 hit, we grew too big. We did not realize we were going to get that big. In too, big 2000, too quick. 2013, it went crazy. And that had a lot to do with The Walking Dead. And we just weren't, at the time, built. we were built more for, you know, 6,000 person show, 7,000 okay. person show, you know. Um, we ended up with 30 plus thousand people. Oh my God. At a 6,000 person venue? No, no, no. Um what we what <laughs> what we were used to. Okay. So you go from six thousand, which you know we have the we have everybody ready for. We have the flow, the patterns. Yeah, yeah. The year before, in two thousand twelve, where we had like fifteen thousand, it was easier to manage. We, we made it. We made it work. But yeah. when it went to that next level, it just doubled. Yeah, we were right there at that moment of the beginning of trolls and cancel culture, and people were just like trolling and trolling. You know, we had 30,000 happy people and 2,000 unhappy people. And it's like, <laughs> you get people that are just like... Decent odds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I love... You can't please everybody. You can't please everybody. No, you can't. You're never going to. And, and you know, it's like I tell people, hey, if I'm not for you, please don't come to my event. I'm not interested in having yeah. you. You know, go someplace else. You can you can cheerlead for whoever you want to cheerlead for. I'm gonna it's like my... film. My movie's not made for everybody. No, no. You know, if this film no. doesn't look for you, don't watch it. Don't man. watch it. No. It's just, it, it, that's the way it should be for everybody. Yeah. If you don't want to, don't. You know, what I do is I literally don't think about other people unless I'm involved with that. But if I'm not involved with you, I turn you off. Mm hmm You know, I have people coming after us all the time. I got but, enough to worry you know, about. Yeah. <laughs> why, I don't why, need hypotheticals. Why should, why should we do that? You know, yeah. you're just crying over spilled milk. And I've always said, look. Go do your dream. Go have fun. Leave people mm -hmm. alone. Sometimes people don't do that, and they think that's their way is to get to other people. It's like, if you're focused on them more than yourself, mm -hmm. then you really don't understand life. Because whatever you think about is what expands in your life. And if you think about your competition, always, 
you're never ever going to grow as a person and get better. Have I made mistakes? Have 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 my team? Have my people? Have everybody I know and never been around made mistakes? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you've made them. I've made them. Yeah, we've all done it. Have we grown from it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, then right. I mean, what's the point? That's the whole thing about this industry of creativity and like, like on this movie we were just on, man, we had a blast. Oh my gosh. It was, a, it was so about they fun. see you. Yes. God, it was a blast to do watching you guys. I love watching you work, man. I mean, just watching well, you, you and your element was <laughs> like, it was just like, I mean, it was like, you know, you can run the biggest sets you, you know, because you were there with the technical equipment, making sure equipment was there, making sure this was on, this was on. And that's what, uh, that's what a set needs is to have some glue mm-hmm. holding things together just, you know, peacefully. Mm-hmm. And, um, we had so much fun, all of us. We bonded. It was like camp for us. Uh, I would love to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. We had, um, we stayed in a, um, <laughs> An RV stayed in a fantastic home. cabin. Yes, we did. But, um, yeah, you did. Yeah. You guys did. <laughs> it had great views, but, <laughs> but getting, getting to it. those views, <laughs> um, uh, I got a video that I was going to put on Patreon, but I'm probably playing it right now here in the blank space between us. <laughs> but uh, it was it was a nightmare to get to, and it did unreal number on my Didn't car. Didn't you guys get rained out a day or so? So we we were on, I think it was the fifth night of production. Might have been the fourth or the fifth. Um, yeah, it was the night we were doing the scene with um, the couple in the car pulling over on the road. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we had rain coming, and our cabin is, it was it was a nightmare to get to. It was a straight up incline, dirt, somewhat gravel sometimes road that was just a cliff in a mountainside, and if another car was coming, sometimes you were just like, well, I guess we're packing up. <laughs> like, uh, it, it, was, it was not good. So we were worried, well, you know, if it rains right there. It's just going to be a waterfall, a mudslide. Like, there's no way we are going to make it to our cabin in my Honda Civic. There's no way. <laughs> so, we had to get production done by, I think I said you have to be done by 10.30. Mm-hmm. Or it was 9.30. It was 9.30 or 10.30. But I told everybody on set, I said, listen, you've got till 9.30, 10.30. It, whatever you've got, that's what you've got. And then everything's packed up because I am not risk Because the rain was either going to be there by, like... 10 30 or 11 like it was going to be there and i was like we have to be back to the cabin and we got back to the cabin as it starts to rain (laughs) we're going up the hill as it's starting to rain we get to the cabin and yeah it just poured that night and there would have been absolutely no way we would have got and there was was six of us staying in that cabin like i was like there's there's no way we have to we have to leave now that's where the cool people stayed and that was the right call because literally by the time we made it back home, we got rained out. And I was like, yeah, with what, our gear and going up was, this hill. What was great about that day was I loved it because everybody pulled together and look what we did in that short. We, we beat that expectation of what we, we were did. Be done. We did because here's the best part. So I think we started, it was probably dark enough, I think like 730, 8 o'clock. Yeah. It, they had an hour and a half to two hours to shoot the scene. Two. Two hours to shoot the scene. Hour and 15 minutes, it was done. Yeah. And because I was just being down there like, yo, you better get this. Whatever you get is what you get. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they wrapped up the entire scene. Uh, it did not, they didn't force the scene. Nope. Um, all not the shots all. Are, are very well thought out and, you know, shot. It looks good. Yeah, it looks good. It wasn't, it wasn't a rush thing, like, you know, two wide shots and then, you know, it was just everybody. Pulling together as one unit. An hour 15. And did a beautiful job. Yeah. I commend that crew and cast. I've had so much fun with all of them. It was... Uh, got done right at when I told them they had to be. Yeah. yeah. Basically. And we uh, we were out of there. <clears throat> I can't. I cannot wait for the premiere. I want to do some really cool stuff with red carpet. I want to really add some stuff to it to make it a much bigger... Do you know where event. this is going to take place? The venue? Yes, it's, it's, it's going to be at the Triple Crown Pavilion again. Okay. However, I'm still thinking about one option for the premiere possibly behind us. There's okay. a, another location. Oh, okay. I haven't made up my mind yet. a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Because there is its own independent film festival. 
Yes. That is going on as well. Yes, there is. Aside um, from our premiere. We, um, throughout history, we originally started as a film festival with celebrities. Then we grew to be a convention and film festival. And we try to really support indie film. And at one you point, do it very well. Which, I would we say really since, since I met you back in 2016, I forget what that venue was, but I remember, I remember where we were. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was, you know, because that was the first movie I had done A with another filmmaker, with Tori. Right. And Tori, you know, he got his awards and stuff. And it, I was just like, damn, like, this festival, like, actually gave a shit about our little movie. The very first festival, and this is relevant to today, Joe Bob Briggs was our first guest. He actually gave away mm. the award. It was Joe Bob Briggs, Gunnar Hansen, and John Dugan from Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wow. And Joe Bob was the MC for our but we had a banquet at that time for awards. We literally had a thirty dollar, twenty five dollar food buffet, uh, not buffet, uh, plate dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That people are at round tables, <coughs> like a little Oscar party. Yeah, it, and that's what I was going for because I wanted to, I wanted, to, I'm trying to treat the people with so re, so much respect that you know what, guys, your film may not we, ever go anywhere. We know how hard it, but was. we know how hard it is. We want you to be awarded for that effort. You deserve it. Even if you don't win this, you deserve this. Absolutely. And yeah. I'd like to go back to that. If I could, mm -hmm. I would make the awards banquet on a Saturday right after the show. You ever have like a little, like a, I, I used to go to one festival um, and they would do the night before a, uh, like a filmmaker mixer. So like, yes, like the I've hotel bar. I've so done like, that. Just all mm -hmm. the filmmakers would come out and hang out. And That's meet probably each other. what we're going to do again this year because <clears> there's <throat> going to be a real. There's a nice bar behind us um, at this place. Um, it's like a Marriott, and, and it's connected by parking lot. So literally, you walk out the door, and there's yeah. the parking lot, and there's the hotel. Um, I, I want to do. Things I've always like had that. fun like that. Just you know, like just those real are, casual. Like yeah, and those are great to network. Yeah. Those are great to exactly. to make a deal. And a lot of deals have been made at my show and shows like mine. Yeah, across country, just running that mixer. Yeah. And I always tell people, we just let us know if you make a deal at our show. We don't want anything. Yeah. We just want to know that maybe we had something to do with, with bringing you guys together. Bringing you guys together. Because uh, sometimes conventions, you know. that's the only way you'd be like, they got who and yeah. who? You got who and who. And sometimes that's the only way those two people will even meet anyways. You know, I'm hoping for the industry because of COVID, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be a new norm. The conventions are... Yeah, it's not going to be what it was no, it's in not. 2018. No, it's not. Um, mm -hmm. You're not going to get large size conventions the way you did anytime this year. Next year, they're going to go... pushing and shoving yeah. shit. No, it ain't happening you're... anymore. <laughs> and, and you're right. I don't know if it ever, in the next five years, will go back to that. I don't even know if New York... And I have no ideas. I don't know what's really going to happen. I have no yeah. proof. They, they might tone it down by a few thousand less every year. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but I was talking to an agent who said, yeah, we're, we may be looking at the new norm. And we just we just did a show in Nashville uh, with a friend of ours, Ben Dixon. His show's called Lone Wolf Tattoo and Horror Show. And that show was so much fun, and it was great because he did something really cool. Um, pretty much the, the state or city, I'm not sure who, a governing body told him he could only have so many people at one time. So he, he did blocks of people every three hours. He kept that number to that block. And it was always consistently busy, even on Sunday morning wow. to 3 o'clock. Okay. And people bought. And it wasn't the largest convention I've ever been to, or the smallest convention. It was a wonderfully ran, simple, consistent, consistent convention. And if all of them were like that, I'd be really happy. Okay. And that's, you know, even with ours, I'm hoping... Mm -hmm. You know, if we have, you know, 2,500, uh, 3,000 people maximum, that's great. That's it. You mm -hmm. know, let's all come out and support. Let's have a good time. Let's do what we can do. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's just, let's party. And can we, can be we. Be safe. Can we, yeah, can we be safe? Can we party? Can we have a good time? Can we stop, can we stop some stuff? It's like, in this industry, there's a lot of politics that goes on behind the scenes between shows and promotions. It's like, guys, you know. We all, you know, think about yourself. Think about your own show. Mm -hmm. Think about your own promotion. <clears throat> think about whatever. You know, there, it's not about competition. Like, you know, if you're in a separate city, mm -hmm. you know, anymore, it's just going to be you're going to get people mostly from that city, and maybe maybe ten percent from the outside of your city. Yeah, 
It's not like it was before <coughs> when we had our big show. We were the only ones around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there wasn't there weren't shows in Lexington like that. Mm-hmm. We were, you know, there was only one show in Lexington, and they well, were, it was like when Horror Hound started up. It was that's the yeah. only thing. It's the whole tri-state. You know, uh, before, we were actually before well, we were before Horror, Horror Hound. Were you? Oh yeah. See, I never even heard. Yeah, it. yeah, we were before Horror Hound. But see, that's because I think I live around here. And not Louisville. Right. Well, so here's I think something that's else. Probably the difference. Ben show. So that's going to what you said, though. You get the people that live yes. in the city. Yes. Because, like I said, I was attracted to that. Ben show from Nashville was before all of us. He was the first horror show in the region. Okay. Okay. Excluding Chicago, he was the first in Indiana, like that. Mm-hmm. Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, Tennessee. Okay. Uh, I was second. Okay. And then Whorehound was after that, and then the other show. Uh, came in the region, and then there was that uh, one year. There was the famous monsters that came in mm-hmm. Indianapolis, and that was oh, really. What was that? Oh yeah, that was. Um, uh, I forget his name. His last name was Kim. But it, um, he bought the magazine. Okay. And decided to put a show on, and I had a really good time at it. It was a good little show. I enjoyed it. A lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Met a lot of people. Um, the problem is, is that, is that. You can only have so many shows in a region grow to a certain size. Mm-hmm. Once you get to that point, like I just said, it's going to be a hometown show. Mm-hmm. Okay? Unless you've got special events or maybe there is one person who's not appearing in any other show in and the you region. Got them. Yeah, the and you've got them. Yeah, if you have that, mm-hmm. you know. And that's what we had when we grew. We were just right place, right time, lucky. Yeah. It wasn't about anything other than that point in history. Now you, you found out, oh, there is a market. For this. Yes. And right now there's I could not do a show like that. And and it, it pulled it. You started it, it out of passion and then it was like, oh shit, other yeah. people want this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll and, give it to them. And I'm hoping that the shows that come back what I'm really hoping is I'm hoping agents and fans, uh I mean agents and celebrities get together and realize that you know Maybe we can bring some of the prices down with some of these people because Ooh, I'm there with you because, you know, I get that you can make a lot of money on the road. However, some people don't need the money. Some of it's just it, it, obvious gouging. Some, you of know it, what I mean? some of it, I think, is honestly, it's too much. I, yeah. I, I, I will agree with that. And, and, and I'm not blaming I'm not blaming celebs or I'm not blaming agents because you can't. The market bears it. Yeah. The people pay that. Mm-hmm. It's just. There's so many amazing celebrities on this circuit uh, mm-hmm. that 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 come to shows. There's a there's a lot of amazing agents, and like anything else on any field, there's a few that aren't exactly the the funnest to work with. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to su- every show's got them. You, well, you know, yeah. I'm trying to support indie, and I've always said this: Halloween and all these other movies that started out as low budget, mm-hmm. small films on an indie level. They created our culture of horror, even the movies previous, from the 50s and 60s yeah. and things like that. Well, they were the new universals. Pretty much. Pretty you much. Know? So if they were the new universals, when you think about it, and they were independent, and they started the culture, maybe we could find the next one here coming up. Mm-hmm. You know, Mike Flanagan used to submit to our show. He's now on, uh, he did uh, Gerald's Game on Net- Netflix, oh, okay. The House on Hunting Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, uh, I think it was Oculus. Yeah, 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 the yeah. WWE film. Right. Uh, yeah, and he yeah. did. He did a couple others, and he's rising in the ranks. and And I'm proud of people like him. He's doing a great job. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he literally is um, making it work. That's awesome. The way it is, you know, and and we've had we've on had, his terms. On his terms, yeah. And I like the fact that he's just <laughs> focused on the art, his work. Mm-hmm. That's all I want to do. Just you know, want to create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, feel, I think we I feel all you. we all get tired yeah. of social media. We all get tired. I get tired of having to answer questions that you want to look at people and go. I don't want to. I don't want to be rude to any of you out there, <laughs> but I want to say, really, you're asking this question. When you ever been asked a question so dumb you fix your own face? Yeah. Well, <laughs> what are you? What are you doing? What are you? What? What are you talking about? Yeah. You know. Okay. Some questions I get, maybe some some of you don't know, but you know who I'm talking to. Some of you guys that just want to be funny. You're trolling. And, yeah, you're trolling. Stop <laughs> trolling, would you? I mean, you know, come on. So I got a question about 
uh, the yeah. I don't know if it is competitive or not, and I've always been curious. Mm-hmm. How competitive is in the in the film fest or in the or the convention side? How competitive is it getting celebrities? Because sometimes you see, you know, you see your 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 mm-hmm. Kane Hodders of the world that you can, or Bill Mosley's that you can see at every convention. Okay. But then you see some where it's like, oh shit, okay. how competitive is some, that? Is some, that more on sometimes the it's, actor? It's very competitive. Um, see, Kane's an anomaly, and Bill and Sid Haig were anomalies. Mm-hmm. They were people. They that, just loved doing it. Well, people would continually, you know pay to have their autograph on a million things or they had a million toys and there and are that's anomalies. What always surprised me yeah i've seen him at probably 20 conventions yeah. he's always signing something and i'm just bill, 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 oh, bill and i'm just like how have you not ran out yet bill <laughs> bill is an anomaly yeah. he's not your standard it's like the roles he's played have resonated with people Kane is the same way. Uh, love guess, Kane. Love once Kane, you're a legend, you know. you're a legend. Yeah, pretty much like, and Kane is a legend. And yeah. Bill Mosley has, is, has become he's a chop legend. Chop. He has become a legend in this industry. He's Otis. He's Chop Yes, top. but yeah, it's, I mean, it's, yeah. he's many things. Yes. You know, um, he's what I call, you know, yes, he was Chop Top, but he's all, what really, really solidified him, I think, was becoming Rob Zombie famous. Mm-hmm. All of Rob Zombie's films helped to solidify his place in that, that community. It, it it is competitive because you have to understand that what people don't who are fans don't yeah, always understand. I want to know a little behind the scenes. Like let's yeah. say let's say I want to get a person that that is going to cost me a lot of money. I mean mm-hmm. a lot of money. So I may make a deal with them to say, I need you to commit ninety days before, ninety days after that you're not going to come within this amount of miles to my show. Okay. Because that's don't a lot go of to money. my competitors. Well, yeah. it's not about going to my competitors. It's about you cost a hundred thousand dollars. I want to mm-hmm. make sure that you're going to get it, so people know that they should come here to go get it. Yeah, yeah, you're um, worth it. And then there's a lot of other ones that are just sometimes it's just pure. They're busy. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not doing shows that month because they're working. That happens a lot. Yeah. Uh, or let's say um, with the people that were in The Walking Dead at one time, there were mixes of things that went on. Like their bosses at one time said you can only do so many shows. At one point, and before that, there wasn't as many of that. But they well, always had the what was that one down there? Walker Stalker. Walker Stalker. Yeah. They always they always had like exclusives there Walker in Atlanta Stalker. to get them, right? Well, or yeah, something. that was that that's was how it looked. That's a little different. Um, Andrew Lincoln and Denai um, would pretty much only do a few shows. Okay. Like two shows in the entire world, and that was one of them, I think. Yeah. Um, and because they were down there, yeah. and I think because it became that. Public relations moves. Was that hometown, AMC. like we're hometown. Atlanta? Yeah, and you want to do that. If you want to meet them, come to yeah. Atlanta. I'll tell you one cool thing about the Walking Dead um, experience I've had with them is Walking Dead changed the face of conventions for a while. I, was, did, I watched it, it happen. It, yeah, it did. I went to a convention. Yeah. I'm just like, the year before, you walked around, you right. got your autographs. The year, the year they after, appeared. I was, yep. you can't breathe. Nope. What happened? The it, Walking Dead it happened. It became pop horror it versus mainstream. the real, right, main, the real you had horror Talking fans. Dead. You had, yes. It, it, it so up. when you when you went to that level, it shifted. And then what happened with a really cool experience with me is um, Robert Kirkman and Tony were from that Cynthiana, Kentucky. That's where it was. That's where Walking Dead was born. So I heard that fan. Came I heard that fan too. Um, <laughs> That's where The Walking Dead um, was born. So I go to an event in Cynthia where Robert and them are there. Everybody's staying in line around the town. They mm-hmm. had a down plane in the middle of the square. It was so cool. Oh, my good gosh. Lines, lines, lines out the wazoo everywhere in that small town. And people don't realize that, you know, the hospital in the first season mm-hmm. is the one... In Cynthia, Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. When I went to uh, I went to a convention down there, and uh, we took a bus down there, and um, where we stayed, we could see, we could see. What convention did you go to? Um, it was Days of the Dead, Atlanta. Oh, okay, gotcha. And uh, we took a bus down there from Cincinnati, like a, like a Greyhound. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was it was like thirty bucks. We got we went all the way down there, 
and uh, but from our hotel room, we could see like we you know yeah. we were looking for the. And I'm like, oh my god, that's the ho- holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> like you know, I loved Walking Dead up until I quit watching after season four. I think I came back for Negan, and then they lost me. Honestly, <laughs> um, I don't watch them anymore either. I heard they just did a Negan mm-hmm. backstory episode though. Yeah. I might just check that one out just to see it because I, I did love Negan and I had very high hopes. I I, I love Negan too. Um, I wanted I wanted to see some of the other stuff I saw because it was such a powerful. But you gotta look at it. I mean, it's going on. You're talking eleven years now, which is crazy when you think about. I mean, for a horror years. television show series. That that is crazy. Did you know they not just, a lot of horror just, shows. Last they just that renewed long. American Horror Story for another three years. What does that mean? How many years does that make American Horror Story? Probably, maybe ten. That's crazy too. That's I mean, I'm okay. I, I'm 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 so hit or miss though. Like I love some American Horror Stories. That's, for me, it's hit or miss too. I hate some American Horror. Something stories. Um, <laughs> I have. Uh, I have more than one more than one convention. Um, we started another convention called Monsters of Horror okay. at monstersofhorror.com. And we did that because we put shows on down in New Orleans. And we had some of the American oh, Horror okay. Story. And they came to one of our, uh, what they call Comic-Con events that we had. And I wanted something to reflect, not a film festival, but just you know just a horror convention. Yeah. So we started Monsters of Horror so you could go after some of the American Horror Story that the people who would come to it would know, okay, so yes, these celebs may have been in other films like pop culture, comic book movies, or yeah. whatever, but we're coming there for American Horror Story because it's a horror convention. Did you get any Coven people? That's the one that filmed there, right? Yes, yeah. I, I did. Yes. Very nice. Yes. That's awesome. Um, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I want to go back to New Orleans uh, and do something in the future. I don't know what, but I want to do that. Uh, and right now, we're just trying to... Get the word out about Friday night this year. We have a Monster Squad reunion. We've got Tyler Maine, Scout Taylor Compton coming. We've got Young Michael Myers coming. And Basically, we got a lot of Rob Zombie. Hall- if you're a Rob Zombie Halloween fan, and I you're going to want to be there this October. I will tell you, we we're working on Art the Clown from Terrifier. You heard it here. Yeah. So uh, Art's going to be there from well, Terrifier. That'll be awesome. Knock on wood. So if something happens in between now and then, to get super busy. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we're we're fortunate working with his agent, uh, working awesome. working the good arrangements out. So we're also going to look at having the director. Damian, they just wrapped, I believe, on Terrifier two, didn't they? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, Terrifier two is going to be coming out. This will be a good chance to meet him before it gets even bigger. I'm working on um, the people from Terrifier two because there's some surprises in there that you guys are going to want to know about. That's awesome. Yeah, big time. Oh yeah. So just here to support independent horror, and you know. Like I tell people uh, constantly, you know, let's have fun. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, COVID. That's was, what this is all COVID about. COVID's about reset for me. Reset for me. I'm not yeah, interested. It was a hard all. reset. It was a hard reset it was <laughs> for me too. I'm not trying to get into this stuff. And like, you know, if people want, if people want to battle it out and troll online, you all go ahead. Troll all you want. You're not gonna, you're not gonna bother me or anybody else. You're just hurting yourself. Have fun. Uh, we're all going to have a good time while the rest of you guys are just sitting at home, mm-hmm. typing away on your keyboard, affecting other people. Go do your dreams. We're going to do our thing. Yeah, keep you keep doing go, yours. You do your thing. You know, be positive. Come out and see people. You know, maybe you get to know people and realize they're pretty cool because there's a lot of really cool people. Out now, there. are you going to do panels at this one? Yeah, we're looking to see what we want to do. Are you just strictly doing kind of film festival, the I'm premiere? Not, and honestly, the I'm really not quite sure yet. And I won't know for about another two weeks. Okay. Because with COVID, we don't know. What if there's a fifth wave, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And all of a sudden, they tell us, okay, you're closed down. Well, nothing <laughs> Never mind. Do. Never take mind. It anybody, take it back. <laughs> Nobody's coming. <laughs> nothing we can do about that. We have to abide by the law and what the state or, or counties and cities says. Mm-hmm. The goal is, I would like to have a few. I don't think I want as many panels as I used to have. Yeah. Because I really want people to be able to experience everything. So if you run 15 panels at once, 15 films at once, 15 parties at once, which we used to do. Yeah. It reminds me of like when I used to go to Warp Tour. You know, there'd be eight stages. I'm there to see 20 different bands. Right. And then I realize, oh shit, three of them are playing on three different stages at the same time. I have to... Who do I want to see more? Right. Do I want to see the movie more? Do I want to hear the panel more? Or do I want yeah. to go get in line for that artist exactly. more? Exactly. And it's just like, 
shit. Well, I would have loved to seen yeah. Simple Plan, but I guess I'm going with some 41. Okay. Right. And it's the same thing. Same thing. I, w- I would have loved to seen that guy's movie, but I really wanted this guy's autograph. So yeah, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to create flow that makes it easy for the rest of you guys. I mean, if you all don't like that, let us know. Email us. You know, email us at info at Fright Night Film Fest. Give us your feedback. Constructive criticism. Tell us, yeah, tell us, hey, guys, can you do this or can you make this part better? We listen to that. But, you know, man, if you're going to stop trolling people, <laughs> you all kill you all kill the rest of us. I mean, but it's just lower the price. Lower the price. You know, <laughs> our prices are low. Go yeah, you, other you've people. always been, and especially especially on the, on the artist side of oh, it. Oh, man. You guys have never tried... To screw the nope. the artists when they try nope. to get a vendor table. We tried. I've lo- been to conventions where it's just like we tried like crazy. Am I paying your rent? You pretty much are. <laughs> like, I just what saw. The hell? I saw a first year show this year, and I asked him. I honestly said, "How can you justify that?" He had three hundred dollar first year tables, first year, and then he had three fifty, four fifty on something else, and his artist tables were like one hundred forty nine. Probably charging a hundred for. Electricity, oh, yeah, it just was, a, a it was extension crazy. cord, bring your own six way. And this person <laughs> didn't know that I put on shows. So I'm familiar with the whole industry. Yeah. I know how to put these on. And you're telling me you're justifying it because a few people in your area were dumb enough to pay it? No offense. <laughs> I mean, Study yeah. the market. Look around you. Never, Especially for first year. Never for a first year show... Do you support somebody that's going, to, that's going to charge you that much when a show going on for 10 years is charging you less or the same? Mm-hmm. You don't do that. No. So, and, and you can have your beliefs all you want, and when you go to that show and you fail, you'll come back and heed what, what, my warning and other people like us who I mean, can tell and, you. So, yeah, and once you're a veteran, once you got that five yeah. or ten years, there's always going to be the new people for whoever you got always. that year, but then you've always got, there is con family. Sure. I can't tell you how many conventions I've gone to, and I just see the same yep. people hanging out there. Absolutely. That's their convention. That's what they do. They yeah. come and they hang out. So you've got those people, but then you've got the newbies every year. You just you just brought something up that's a good point. Let, let me I'm look everybody straight in, their, in the face when I say this. <laughs> that's fine that you have a favorite convention for your reasons, okay? Enjoy it. You don't mm-hmm. have to put down other people's conventions. Hey, I actually go to a ton of conventions, and I like a lot of conventions for different yeah, I'm reasons. Yeah, convention rat. Me too. This size my own. So people are saying, oh, I like their convention. They're better or whatever. And they take up for their convention. Mm-hmm. And the shit they say, it's like slanderous and libelous and everything. Yeah. It's like, guys. Everybody's good at their own Yeah, thing. man. Enjoy the convention. You like it because it's your home base. It's no different than basketball teams that I grew up yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. If it's UK, UofL. People at UofL hated UK. UK hated UofL. If you, like, if you UFL. live in Chicago, it's you like, probably like the Bulls. Right. It's like... <laughs> Come on. I mean, we all know you're rooting for your home team. Give us a break. So enjoy it mm-hmm. because it doesn't mean crap to the people nationally. And conventions now, there's so many conventions out there versus what there used to be. Right? Yeah. That it's like it's like it's like filmmaker exactly. filmmaking. It, it it just with the digital revolution yes. boom, yeah. everything became oversaturated. That's right. Every, I mean, everything. Did. And it is oversaturated. You have I wish that here's what I really wish for that. I wish all of you people that are putting money in your own projects that are only going to be okay and never really turn out to be great. I wish all of you would put your project together money wise into one amazing project. I know it'll never happen. Collaboration, collaborate. Not enough people, especially no, they when don't. you're starting off. It's like I got everybody's got a, this thing and I had it. I got to prove to everybody sure. I can do sure. it. And you can. By asking for, there's nothing wrong with asking nothing for wrong help. With asking for help, you know, like I I can't draw, so I can't storyboard. But I'm a visual person, and I need a storyboard. So I'm gonna have to collaborate sure. with an artist to create that, so that I can visually tell a cinematographer how I want it to be seen. Like there's there's this whole collaboration, and it's just like you can't, you just can't do this by yourself. Well, yeah. well, well, we we did on uh, they see you. We all collaborated perfectly, you know. You know, yeah. What was great about it? We had a situation with something come up at the very beginning. We sat everybody down in a mature fashion, every talked it out. Every morning, we would have a crew production meeting. Every morning. Um, and it worked beautifully. And it was, yeah, it was a fantastic, um, you know, 
It was cohe- it was a cohesive. Everybody would just everybody. vent. Yeah. You know, if you had problems in the day before with something, all right, let's address it now so that it's not a problem moving forward. And That's the thing that I hate about... And I'll use like the a, first day, we had a huge problem yes, all, we did. with the lens caps. Oh, I, that was I was getting very angry because lens caps kept going missing. So we brought it up in the meeting, and it would just made it very clear, you know, when you take the cap off, this is where the cap goes. Never had a problem going forward. You know, and it sounds ridiculous, but that's... No, it's you know, important. Whether it's something as small as that or if it was a big problem, it was just, let's just address it in the morning and moving forward, it's not going to be a problem. It was resolved. It wasn't. We, we had another issue with someone that was just, they were uber excited and they were a certain way and basically we had to discuss with them, this is what the director wants. They were great after that. We yeah. all got along, everything. But it's about... You got to talk. Yeah. And that's the problem with a lot of this industry People have problems with people. Well, of course, there's conflict. Yeah, you know. Of course, there's ego. It's a of bunch of artists hanging out yeah. together. It's it, <laughs> it's the same with conventions. Oh, you got one promoter that doesn't like one promoter, and another yeah. promoter has a problem with because, this because he got of this client and he yeah. wanted that client. Or there yeah. was a there, there was an agent issue or this issue. That's just the way. It, that's the way it is. I personally hope everybody succeeds. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Have fun. Just you know. You leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. Yeah. You know? If you don't leave me alone, hey, I don't start it, I'll, but I will... I'll, I'll settle it. I'll settle it, <laughs> and I will have to deal with some stuff. And, you know... In the words of Negan, we'll shut that shit down. We'll shut that shit down in a, in a heartbeat. <laughs> and uh, it's like, I'm ready. You know, this is a new phase in life. We, you know... What we did with Fright Night was we, we were going to let it just kind of glide a little bit and mm-hmm. just kind of keep it going and so enjoy it. How many years it. are you on now? 16. 16 years. 16. That's awesome. Well, now I want to take it to that big one. And and you know what? You got to get it to 20 now. Let, let me tell you this. When you talk about help, I reached out to people. I said, I need your help. I said, you know, I talked to Tori. I'm going to talk to, you know, a couple people that you know and, mm-hmm. you know, we talked about with you. Tori Jones, who's already a guest yes. on the show. Yes. Yeah. Um, Tori Jones, we talked talk about with you. Sometimes there's a point where you've got to have fresh eyes. Mm-hmm. And I want to say, okay, help to bring this to a certain level. Let's have fun. Let's make it phenomenal in a different way. Yeah. Maybe there's a new generation that can see it differently. Let's try something different. Let's try it completely different. So we're going to try a few new things. Yeah. And see what we can come up with. And Iron out now, then by year yeah, 20, we're going to... Absolutely. We're going to... Because kill it. I would really like to do something for distribution i don't know what i've had the hardest time figuring it out it's taken me five years Just something that's always been on that burner it's always been out there for me i thought you know if these people can do it i know i can because i'm i've got these skills how sets. do i do it but how do we do it mm-hmm. so the artist can win because it's like i'm sick and tired if the artist puts all that money in why should they only get 10 percent by the time it's over hey you preach it to the choir over here why should it <laughs> why should it be one percent yeah and you guys only, if you make a film with distribution, by the time you calculate everything from from cost to the government when you have to pay back for taxes and everything else, you are talking about 3 4% mm-hmm. minimum. Because if they're only going to give you 20%, it's ridiculous. It's like you made it. It's your product. However, what mechanism, what system? Yeah. Is it just streaming nowadays? So now we got to go back to old school, which is simply sales and say, Hey, uh, we got a product. It's going to cost you four ninety seven a month. Pay us. <laughs> Simple as that. We're not yeah. going to pay you for your movie. Per se, we're going to pay you for the hits. We'll put it on the platform. On, yeah, and then we'll give you this much money. Well, we've got one hundred thousand follow uh, subscribers. Well, that's four hundred ninety seven thousand a month. That's you know what is that? That's nearly four and a half million dollars a year. Yeah. Okay. okay? So if it's four and a half million dollars a year, and you made a thirty thousand dollar movie. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they're not going to be able to pay you thirty thousand, but they may give you five, ten, fifteen thousand. Yeah, and just say we want these rights only. But I don't know, Ro. I really sincerely yeah, wish there's a lot to figure out. Yeah, there were. I really want to know the answers because I'm literally at a stumbling block of is this viable anymore? Yeah, at this level, or if right when I start streaming, yes, does the next damn Platform. thing happen? Does the next? Yeah. What is the this rebel- where, like it's like I you know what I constantly would where does social media go? I'm like right. what what is gonna replace Facebook? 
And something will. Something something will come along, but I'm like, what does it have to have? Right. What is it going to offer that we're like, oh, yeah, fuck Facebook. Okay, okay. well, think about like, this. You know what I mean? What like, if the government says F Facebook? When they've got those guys up there on the hill, and they're they're grilling them like, hey, guys, you have too much power. Mm-hmm. When I hear people talk about like that, do you hear what just happened with Major League Baseball? A 90-plus-year-old ruling is going to be overturned. Now baseball can be sued for antitrust violations when it wasn't able to capably be, be sued before. Really? Now they're going to. So that means, okay, if Facebook's being told and Twitter you've got too much power, mm-hmm. you're affecting elections, mm-hmm. you're going to do this, so what? what's happening now? Yeah. Because now you've got this current government. Because you can't go back. You can, Well, you can't go back. Yeah. Right? So what do you do? Yeah. So for me, it's it's like this. I've always said, if we could find a way to bring that down a little bit for social media, mm-hmm. because I don't think, here's the thing about social media, and you've had this happen with filmmakers we know. Yeah. We have friends that will hear about somebody stating something on social media, right? Mm-hmm. But what is their reach, really? Just the people we know? Yeah. And how many of those people really give a crap or pay? Facebook, I think, the last I heard, and this was a couple of years ago, it's probably even less, you only, in their algorithm, yeah. only see 300 statuses a day. True. true. That, and that is between ads. That true. is between ads. I think it's every three, every, uh-huh. every three statuses there's an ad. Yeah. But you get to see only 300 statuses between ads, your friends, and pages you've liked. Right. So that's any businesses that have ads that they're promoting. Right. And it's just, so you really don't see, you only see the shit you like. Right. That's why, like, you know, you've got your friends from high school on Facebook, but you don't see their shit on Facebook unless you go to their page. You forget your friends with them because Facebook knows you don't care, so we're not going to show you. Yeah. So No, that's perfectly perfectly put. You're right. So your status is, you know, so it's like, what is the reach? Nobody... You, you can't measure it. No, you really can't anymore. You, you know? Yeah, I'll give you an example. I've got 180,000 people <coughs> who like my my horror page, my Friday yeah. page, right? But your status probably only reaches maybe 500. Maybe 500. Uh, with, unless you give them some money. Right. Um, and it's just like... Sometimes like like our shares will reach 3,000. Yeah. But that's, that's about it unless I pay for them. Yet there's 180,000 people that say, no, I like yeah, that too. Right. But Facebook's right. like, but you don't want to engage, so we're, don't worry about that's it. That's right. We don't, you know. You so don't it's, engage. It's an impossible. That's why the groups, I think, are better. Gr- I, yeah, I have, I have found much uh, success with groups lately. Yeah. Just because, and it's nice to see that, like, somebody's actually seen your, your thing. Like, you, when you paid Facebook, they would just say, somebody saw it. In a group, you can be like, oh. 48 people saw it, and these are the 48 people that did see yeah. it. Yeah. And I don't have to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have found um, Facebook groups to be pretty good. I but, have too. But I enjoy it. I want to take a break real quick, and then we'll be right back at it. All right? My daddy used to tell me about a little girl named Strawberry. The kids in school thought she was a witch. And one night, their daddies came by to hurt that little girl. But something else out in them woods came to hurt them all. In the morning, the townsfolk saw what was left of the bodies. Only the little girl was never found. And then, many moons later, Little Strawberry and the Monsters came back.
All right. So I want to get more now into a little bit of the filmmaker side of you. Mm -hmm. Um, where did it start? Because your dad, your dad was, uh, your dad. What did your dad do? My dad worked. Is that at, kind of the My dad worked came? in a television station for years. Okay. And <clears throat> I was, uh, I was adopted. So he, 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 he's where I get part of it. That's mm -hmm. where the nurture comes mm -hmm. from. Um, and I found out my birth family is involved heavily. My birth uncle, Tom, had a effects studio in Burbank. Oh, wow. And he taught at USC Film School. To the and, blood. Yeah, you know, he was an adjunct <laughs> professor. And my cousin, his son, um, is, a, uh, is a screenwriter. And my other cousin, Eric, works at Pixar currently. Wow. So then the youngest was a cartoonist. So it was like, I have all these. And you wanted to do you know, that all these things youth. in me. Yeah. Wow. And I did political cartoons as well, but my father instilled in me, you know, the camera. He said, here, I'll show you how to use the camera. He gave it to me. And it was a way to bond with him at the time. Mm -hmm. And it just <clears> stuck. <throat> and so I thought very creatively. Yeah. Okay. So when I was a kid, I had something happen to me. And it was a, um, it was a seizure. They diagnosed me with childhood epilepsy, so wow. technically I was considered disabled for my entire life, but I never wanted that label, and what it did was it altered my brain at the time mm -hmm. to where how I thought was very visual, Okay. so for me, writing was difficult at that age. Mm -hmm. Now, through the years, I learned and, and overcame and, and studied on how to re- make my brain be, reprogram. reprogram essentially. <clears throat> so the reprogramming affected me to the level that I could do a lot more than some people could because my brain saw things a different way, right? So um, I made four films. Um, a Really Weird Summer, which was Claymation. Oh, wow. Which then I did Special Effects, which was the Really well, Weird Summer. How long was that process? Oh, that was, how old are you? I was uh, 12, 13. Yeah, I did every one of these for book reports, and I got all A's, and that was amazing. Because you didn't want to write out, you couldn't write Hated out the essays. I, yeah. I te told the teacher, I said, that is so essays funny. are more difficult. I did, I did short films for my English class. Same here, that's what I did. My uh, so. my teacher, shout out to Mr. Worsh, he would, he would allow me, I was like the only student, that instead of like writing my own short story, yeah. I could go film my own short story. That's exactly what happened. And, uh, right. It'd be like three minutes long, terrible, with like sure. one other uh, classmate, and they'd get credit because they helped me on it. But uh, well, yeah, it, I was the same way. <laughs> it, it's funny. I, if and that was in high school. <laughs> if you're, if you're going to shout out, I'm going to shout out to Miss Sharber from the seventh and eighth grade. Ms. There you go. Uh, Miss Westenhofer as well. St. Helens in uh, the south end of uh, Louisville, Kentucky. It, uh, which is no longer there, unfortunately. They, they Mr. Barth, down. too. There you go. Mr. Barth would let me do shit, too. So, in science class. We love teachers. <laughs> we love teachers, by the way. Thank you for your support and encouraging us to be what we wanted to be. Um, so that kind of thing led me into, okay, I want to do this, but I didn't know how to make money at it, right? Yeah. So that's when I got into business, and I said, and I always kept a dream in me, Ro. I was like, I'm one day going to do this with people. You almost wanted to protect the artist side of you. I did. You know? Absolutely. You were like, I want to do this, but like, I got to be mindful of this. And, and you know, honestly, bro, when, for those of you that have ever had a seizure before, this is, you'll understand this. Your sense of security changes because the ground shakes, your body shakes, you have no control. The snow would come up, you'd see it, you couldn't talk. You had no control over what you once had control over. Mm -hmm. So... Your personality may change to where you're less trusting. You want to, you want to make sure your basics are covered. That if was my thing. You can't control yourself, right? Then you can't. What you, can what you, can control? you control? So my financial life was always important. So that's why I gave up the arts and went for that. And then I realized that it always fed my soul. It was important to me. Mm -hmm. So that's why through the years, mm -hmm. just to let any of you guys know out there, if you wasn't hear, overnight. Wasn't overnight. No, I'm 53. I'll be 54. So. Um, I lost a lot of money giving a lot of you great entertainment and great time, by the way, through <laughs> these conventions, more like a quarter million dollars for things that 
probably I shouldn't have done, but I was thinking about people because I have a big heart. You weren't doing it from for I the fans' point of view. I was yeah. doing it for the fans. I wasn't doing it about making money. We never, we did not make money on it. I just like to break even. How about starting at zero and getting paid it's zero? Like, man, for it'd all be that great time. if we could do this again next year. We just got to make what we put into. <laughs> right, just make <laughs> what you put into. Film is was important to me because I would go into movie theaters. Mm -hmm. And that's escapism. And that's why I've had kind of differences of thoughts nowadays. I don't like critics. Yeah. Any critic. I don't even... Any I, critic. I barely send my films off to get reviewed. No, I don't like I don't, any I don't care what you think. I just... Right. If somebody likes it and they paid for it, yeah. I'm, I'm more happy Absolutely. than you saying a good article about I'm, the film. I prefer Steven Spielberg's idea at the time, which was, I don't care about what critics think, I care about the numbers on Monday morning. Because that means... You, the fan, are who he felt was important. Yeah. Okay. Art is. Did a, they show up? Did they see that's it? That's right. Did, that's what did they pay for it? Did they, you know, did they want to see it? And I just want to entertain people. So my whole thing now is, it's like, okay, I don't want to get into fights and arguments. I don't want to get into any of these other things in, in, in any field that requires you to do that. I'm not interested in playing politics. Mm -hmm. I just want to make good art. Yeah. I want to have fun. And Roe knows <laughs> that's my new philosophy is. COVID was a reset. I'm not interested. You're not going to bait me. You're not going to get me to do that. I want to make great art. And film, since you have the ability to take these cameras, we have all these great ideas, we can do that. Now I've got to figure out what do we do that makes us different. Like, we've got this one project coming up. It's a road movie. Yeah. Okay? And I'm excited about this road movie mm -hmm. because it combines... Multiple ideas, but what does it do? Multiple genres. Multiple genres. What does it do? It just entertains you. <coughs> it is clearly not trying it to... It is written to entertain. It is not... And it has minor social yeah, uh, ideas that get people to think. That's all I want you to do is be entertained. Have that's a what time. art should do. Art should do that. I mean, that. when you look at a good painting, that's what it does. It makes you think. Absolutely. I mean, that's what a film should do. Yeah. You know, you should leave the theater being like, you know... I remember when I saw Shutter Island. Man, I might not have thought so much after a damn movie walking out of this. I was like, <laughs> what? So, I mean, did... I, it was just so much... I thought so much about it. And I'm like, I guess that's what the filmmaker wanted, though. He wanted me to yeah. figure it out. You know what movie made <laughs> me do that to the point where I had to stop? Mm. Christopher Nolan's Inception. Inception's great. It's I, great. It's just it makes you feel yeah, like... Oh, yeah. You're there's, just like, there's moments where you're like, where's the remote? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. So, did he say? <laughs> and they're now okay. I'm caught up. I just want to make sure. I just, just want to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I'm. I, I'm a supporter. I like. To, I like to really help people and support yeah. people. And I try. Like with a lot of you guys, I'm like, you know, guys, we can do this. Yeah. <coughs> we don't need all this money. We need time, creativity, maybe some props here. We need some of this. Yeah. And we need ideas. You know, we need. Guts, determination. We can yeah. do it. Um, and I'm having some fun with it. I've got a film that I am DP, cinematographer, for most of it. Other people have put their hands in it, too. You did and a few others. But I'm doing the majority of it now. Um, also the executive producer. It's called it? On Dark and Bloody Ground. Yeah. Yeah. And did you guys rap or you're about to? Two days. Two days. Have we two have, days left? We have one big scene that... So by the mutual... time this is out, yes, he will, will be it, wrapped. When will this be out? This will this will be playing in May. Okay, yes, yeah. we'll be wrapped by then. Uh, our friend, mutual friend Derek, will be coming in for one of those. Derek Worley. Derek Worley is a great guy. IFX Studios. Yes, if you ever get a chance to work with him, do he's 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 great to work with. A special great guy. effects artist, you'll be happy. Absolutely, <laughs> you will totally. Um, so that's coming out, which I'm really excited about. We've got. Uh, Placid Park, which you and I are working on, it's mm -hmm. your baby, your idea, and I'm helping to produce, which is a, which I'm I'm halfway through the script, and I'm not going to yeah. tell you what I think because it's, <laughs> you know, where you you you. Enjoy well, you don't it. have to tell me here. <laughs> you you enjoy it, but at the same time, you're just like you're going to wait till the end. But I know it's going to be great when it's all when, when I'm done with it. Let's say you know uh, the 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 broad yes, story, so I'm excited story. for you to actually yeah learn the story. Well, it's 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 been a good journey because you've had a lot of passion with this. And you are, you're so adamant about it, even when some people have said not to do it. Mm -hmm. So because it means that much to you, there's a reason. So I believe in that with you. Well, and, and it 
It's going to be great. Sometimes Whatever. you just get uh, you get that itch where it's like, no, this is um, this is my next movie. Right. It's like yeah, this, um, is it. this is you know like when when Hitchcock did Psycho, you know, everybody told him not to do it. It's true. And he just this is my next movie though, like this is. This when is an, what I want to do. <laughs> when an artist is willing to go that far, that's when I look at them and go, "Okay, I have to, I have to listen because that's what it takes to get these things done. Mm-hmm. It takes that guts, <clears throat> determination. And if you don't, if if you're just being paid for it, okay, that's fine. You'll get it done for that. But if the pay is not what it's about, then you know it means something. They're going to get it done. No we just want to tell good stories. Yeah, and it's 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 a so far it is a good story. And the other movie we're talking about making. Is going to be one of those perfect ways of bringing it together. It's going to be fun. It's just going to be fun. And yeah. I, I think after COVID, Ro, I think we need more fun. Listen, guys and girls out there, people, I mean it when I say it. Be easy on yourself. Let it go. You know, I, I have a saying that comes from a book, and it is, if we can all start to use this or wear this shirt, what you think of me is none of my business because I don't have room enough to think about you guys all the time. I want to have room enough to think about the happiness I've got in my mind and my heart and the joy for what I'm doing artistically. Mm-hmm. And I may not make any money from it. Like I told you, <clears throat> I'm making movies for fun. I'm not looking at making a dime on these. As long as I don't lose money, Yeah. if I just break even, I'm mm-hmm. happy. I just want to have fun. And if I can support people having fun... As much fun as we had. Yeah, well, we had a blast. We had a blast, we man. Had a blast. It was it was it was as professional as any set in LA I've ever worked on. It was a blast. Oh uh, yeah. So speaking of that, um so so you did the claymation stuff as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you move to LA? I, no, or... I, I would travel to LA a whole lot. Okay. I, I met my birth family in ninety one. Okay. So I would go out there quite a bit. I was born ninety two. I <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, I would go out to L.A., and then I would stay with people, <clears throat> and I worked on films, which I will not say what they are. Yeah, you just you worked on stuff out there. I worked yeah. on $3 million films. <laughs> uh, the biggest movie I ever worked on where I was actually paid by the studio was an $80 million Michael Mann movie. Okay. Called The Insider. And they hired our, they contracted our services for stress management at the time, because I had a therapeutic office that we, we dealt with. Do it all, man. Well, that was a part of the arts for me. You yeah. Know? I mean, it was kind of... Work with your hands. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I was an artist. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I still paint. I still enjoy... I do that stuff on the side. Yeah. It's like watching Derek, you know, like, I should have <clears> guessed, <throat> but... Cause, Live vicariously. Well, like, like people like Derek, you know, he's, he's drawing, right? And I'm thinking, yeah. you know, duh, he's a special effects artist. He's going to be able to draw. Of course he's good with his hands. He's, of course he's good. Yeah. He's an illustrator. And I've enjoyed watching people just get out there and just go for it. Um... And it's the same with film. Like, like we did some films last year, okay? Mm-hmm. During COVID, we were COVID safe. Um, there were several We did some shorts for Horrors and Fiends. Horrors and Fiends. Had a blast doing it. We did four. Yeah, yeah. Four. Um, so, you know, everybody wore masks. It's they were, coming. They were, oh, yeah, it's coming. It'll be there at some <laughs> it's point. It's just, we're working on it. COVID just Speaking of which, the breaks. I did talk to Jason about that, Crow. Oh, okay. And so I told him to get a hold of me and maybe we can push some of that to go faster yeah. and get it done. So, Make that happen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk to him about that. Uh, Jason Crow, by the way, uh, fantastic actor, mm-hmm. great guy. Um, I got to see him do some... Uh, yeah, he did second some, AD or first AD. Yeah, or he, he did, did some. Uh, he, he did, did some, some great stuff. On he did they some see great you. stuff on They See You. I was, I was, I was Filled happy some to good see good shoes. It. Yes, I was happy to yeah. see it. So, yeah, but that's that's where the film that's where the film's at. And you know, I've got a few other projects. I've got a couple shorts I'm going to do this year. I have. Um, You've got a pretty popular fan film, right? I was just going to talk about that. Yeah. I've got a fan film that's about ready to hit a million. Views. A million views um, on YouTube. It is a Star Wars fan film, but what makes it unique <laughs> is it's not a 15 minute or below fan film. It's a 52 minute long. Nearly, it's a feature. It's a feature uh, fan film. So for people to sit through that thing, you you turn it on at home and you sit back on the couch. You're not going to want to sit at the desk. You're going to want to. Yeah, right, yeah. You're going to want to watch. <laughs> we uh, we literally had to score that through a, a local gentleman in Louisville who did an amazing job. Uh, uh, Joe uh, Joe Stockton. We had to rescore it because I don't know if anybody remembers that little Star Wars situation where the largest Star Wars YouTube channel was having an issue with their fan film uh, oh, really? with Warner Brothers. So 
I told my crew, nope. <laughs> we're not trying to get sued. I went to Lucasfilm, <laughs> dealt with Lucasfilm. They were polite, they were wonderful. But I said, not gonna take any chances. He rescored the whole thing to make a Star Wars like soundtrack. It sounds amazing. Yeah. Just it's, in the vein of. Oh, yeah. Just in the vein of John Williams. It was beautiful. And uh, I have six more coming up, but we're gonna do six to eight minute shorts. Okay. And I created something called. Um, well, I don't want to give it away yet until I get everything. Yeah, I don't want people yeah, to. That's but it's a, it's a, it, it's a uh, continuing series, and then I want to do a part two to the one, because the Star Wars one. Yes, because Mara Jade. We did ours about Mara Jade, and Mara Jade uh, was uh, was created by Timothy Zahn, and they just brought Timothy Zahn into the Star Wars universe, so they're going to use his characters. So Admiral Thrawn is looking to come in, which means somewhere. Luke Skywalker's wife, who is became who who became his wife, which is Mara Jade, is going to come in there. So we will have had the first real fan film with to that do an, character. Yeah, uh, what I mean by real fan film is there was a woman that used to dress up as her, and she got a lot of fan stuff back twenty years ago. Okay, but there hasn't really been one about. There Mara hasn't Jade. been a narrative, no short piece or even feature. So piece we're going to go for character. part two of this and bring in a few surprises, and we're going to use. Some of the newest technology. That's awesome. That, and I, I'm real excited about that. That won't happen until next year because the person I want to get to act in it, who's a stunt person, lives in Canada. And Canada's not letting people no, come, not right come, now. come over the, the line right now because of COVID. Um, so that'll be that'll be coming up soon. And basically, you know, if people bring stuff to me, I've got to shoot this weekend. They're going to use my building. Uh, I'm going to be involved in that for a day. Uh, I've got... Two or three other people that want to shoot. I've got some reality people, uh, paranormal folks that want to shoot in in, in my studio. Um, Can so. we talk about your studio? Right now, I know you're 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 in the process of yeah. uh, of still you know modernizing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we're updating it. We're yeah, I'm rehabbing an old twenty thousand square foot four story building. The beautiful building. It's neat. It really is cool. Um, it was originally a movie theater and an opera house. Back in the 1800s, in the early 1900s, um, it is uh, currently the first floor is done mostly, 99. Mm -hmm. percent It's got a theater without movie seats in it. it right it, now, it's just an open room with a giant, you know, screen. Yeah, uh, it's got. It's an old. It's going to be like an old school look. It's like an it's older. Got that theater. great lighting though. Yeah, those, it does. Those big, uh, big dome yeah. glass pieces yeah. and the dimmers yeah and, it's yeah. it's it's cool um and so there's that and mm -hmm. then on the second floor i've used the rooms that we're rehabbing to turn into part of our studio from sheriff's office to 80, 80s living basically room. you you i say it was what was it on the on that floor apartments at one time so it was a bunch of different apartments and now since then basically on some of them they've knocked some of the walls down but most of yep. them are basically just their own abandoned rooms right and he's been building them into different set pieces. Yes. And um, and then just being able to change it, like you said, he's got a sheriff's office. He has you had a kitchen, a bedroom. Yes. Yeah. Um, living room. You had a living room, room, bathroom, eighties room, a bathroom, a, a mobile home. And these were all look. just sets yeah. that they built upstairs. A medical office upstairs, a coroner's so office. Yeah. That's is that the goal with the second floor is to be able to just build well, a bunch of different sets and be I able to basically I want to get it, those out. I want to get it complete and just. Build the rooms out complete so that they're all finished. Mm -hmm. And then make a decision on what I'm going to do with that. And then figure out how to dress them from there. Yeah, because if I do it a certain way, then we could... Because you could keep a prop room with right, all that shit right, and then just have empty rooms right. and be like, well, what do you want in there? Right. You want a bedroom? You want a doctor's office? What do you want? Right, exactly. Um, and I just had a person just yesterday, Ro, ask me about all this used medical equipment. Yeah. He's shooting something with it, but he has no place to store it. I said, bring it over. I'll be more than happy to have yeah, a medical room, exactly. you know? So I mean, it's got everything for like a like someone's in a medical, you know, See, that's room great. Monitor, and then you know. that's something that you can rent out to that yeah, you plan yeah. to rent out to filmmakers. So or? hopefully we'll see where that that leads because ultimately where I'm living, which is 30 minutes from Louisville, I'd like to, I'd like to get, um, <clears throat> you know, I would like to get um, kind of a acreage in a big. Big, big studio, yeah. flat, 10,000 square big warehouse. foot, high warehouse, metal one. And the reason why I want a high one is because I want to be able to roll cars in there, giant green screen. Yeah. And do, you know, do, harnesses a, do flying harness effects, you know. Yeah. 
Um, which is cool because at one time, I don't know if they're still here, the company out of California, their home base was Louisville. They were called Z Flying Effects, and they're the ones that would do all the effects for Peter Pan and Spider Man on oh, Broadway. Wow. So their unit was here, was in Louisville, Kentucky, well, right? Based out of there, yeah. So I I still love to be able to do that because who wouldn't? Right? Yeah. You know? Who doesn't want? Who doesn't want to be like? Well, just so you know, <laughs> he can fly. Just so you know, if you have that in the script, <laughs> yeah, it's like um, well, we, we did a, it. We have a giant twenty foot green screen, tall wise, like, and a and forty feet long. Like he and, can know. run from the explosion, or <laughs> we can launch him from it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's up to you. Whatever you want. <laughs> but you can, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's cool about technology, Ro, is right. that we've got that ability to to change these directions and what I'm hoping happens is, is I'm hoping that that people do more instead of talk about it more because I'd like to see Kentucky do more Indiana Ohio uh, to help out independent filmmakers it. you know and just independent filmmakers if you guys would it, it, there are some people I don't know what the problem is but you, you know you guys get mad at each other and it's like you guys are jealous it's like if you don't understand business, understand that putting someone else down or soiling a reputation is not going to make you fans, or it's not going to make you rich. You're not going to. You're you're, you're not going to gain. From you're not going to gain a dime in anything. If you think you are, you're wrong. Mm. Just ignore everybody. You know, I had something just recently. We talked about it. I'm ignoring the person because it's your thought, your opinion, your competition. You're just jealous, and anybody that knows. Knows that person is just jealous, and you'll be jealous of somebody else like, down the road. Exactly, if you're not jealous of that person. Somebody else will, will piss yeah. you off. Somebody else just quit it. You know, hey man, go out. I don't know, smoke a joint maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Chill out. Chill out is what I'm saying. Chill take out. some, take some pain meds. I don't know. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't it, make sure they're prescription. If maybe you have a drink. Maybe have a drink. <laughs> But just scream in a pillow. Do what you got to do. But you know as well as I do, the industry itself, even from L.A., is wrought with, is wrought with problems, as they would say. It's, it's it got, shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It fun. shouldn't be cutthroat in the indie industry as it is. It shouldn't be in a Hollywood industry. It should not. Be. It should not. We be. should be helping each other get to there, and then be like, "Oh shit, this is cutthroat, ain't it?" Right. <laughs> because if we help each other out, we all win. That's that's my goal. Yeah. And I want yeah. people to sense that, that that's what I'm trying to do. 100%. That's all. So there's there's well, my film world in a nutshell. I think it's a good way to close it, my dude. All right, brother. Well, thank you for coming out here, man. Good to see all you. All right. And we will see you guys next time on 605 at 605. All right. Wow. See you, bro. Thank you, man. <laughs>